Hello there and welcome to the first English Rail Film Festival show, a show which I'll be interviewing people from across the film industry, sharing with us their knowledge and their experiences of bringing a film to the big screen and beyond. Now for my first show I was fortunate to interview Simon Cox. Now Simon Cox is a director, producer and writer and he's going to share with us the amazing creative journey and experiences of making a sci-fi feature film called Invasion Planet Earth. Now before we speak to Simon I thought it'd be great to show the trailer. Massive explosions are being reported in Mexico City, Los Angeles and San Francisco. President Waterman has warned the governments of the world to brace themselves. People of Earth, attention. What do you want? You are next. Jesus Christ! Fire, 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 fire! No! Focus on your hopes. Thank you very much, Simon, for joining the show today. And um, yeah, before we start the interview, can you tell us about yourself? Why a bit about your career and what inspired you to get into this this <laughs> amazing world of filmmaking and quite stressful world sometimes? <laughs> well, you know, I, I always wanted to make films ever since I was a kid. You know, I saw Star Wars back in '78, and um, even before then, you know, I loved Marvel comics and Spider Man and Hulk, and I always knew I wanted to do something creative. But it was when Star Wars came along. I remember sitting there in the cinema going, I want to make movies. I want to make, break into the film industry. And even though, you know, I left school and trained as a chef, um, I got into the industry when I was about 22 as a runner. And uh, I worked in, I got into children's TV. And I, I got into the edit rooms on things like the Wombles and Astro Farm and Huxley Pig, Treasure Island. It was, it was loads of kids TV, but it was a great learning curve. It wasn't quite, I was trying to get in on Indiana Jones, but I, I just couldn't get into that, you know, that kind of world. Um, but we used to cut on film. It wasn't, it was before, you know, non-linear came on. So we were actually chopping film up and hanging it up on the bin. And it was a massive, massive learning curve. And I really learned how to kind of construct films and put them together. And I knew pretty early on I wanted to make feature films. And, you know, I, I, and back in those days, there wasn't really quite the educational things that you get now. So... We had to, I had to learn the hardware, just find out how everybody else did it. And uh, it all really came down to writing scripts. And once I learned to write scripts, um, I, I went on from there. And that's how I got into feature films. I got my first film done. And my first film was um, a supernatural thriller called Written in Blood that pops up on uh, Sky occasionally. It's been on the Horror Channel and Sky. It's been on all sorts of different channels, actually. Movies for Men all those ones, um, but it's great. And it's, uh, you know, it did really well and it sort of led to other things. But, you know, to pay the bills, I'm an editor and a cameraman and I, I make films, documentaries, whatever, really. So that's me in a nutshell. Oh, brilliant. So, um, yeah, so Star Wars, there's loads of it. I think it was James Cameron that came out and said that he start, was he a truck driver, wasn't he? And he decided to become a filmmaker after he saw Star Wars. Really? Blimey, yeah. there you go. It well, was, I was a chef, but I was still trying to get. I was still trying to get into the film industry. So, yeah, that's great. Wow. So, um, yeah. So, um, you, your next feature film, you didn't make it easy on yourself. Um, I mean, what one thing you decided to do a big special effects film, which yeah, well, got loads of issues with that. And um, yeah, yeah. But but the journey, I find the journey is bit the creative journey is film really interesting because. You're so inspiring to filmmakers out there because you just didn't give up. Now, tell us about <laughs> this, this your feature film, which started as titled Kaleidoscope Man. So, Kaleidoscope Man, how yeah. did that? How did that? Well, you know, it's it's. I I, I always knew I wanted to make sci-fi, um, and I'd made it. You know, I'd made shorts and things, but it was really deep in my heart. You know, I didn't think about anything else 
um, you know, obviously I'm married and I've got two lovely kids and all that sort of thing. And that's, that's all fantastic. But it was really something deep inside me. Star Wars kicked something off and I tried everything to get into it. And, and I knew pretty early on, I knew I could make a sci-fi movie. I'd made, I'd made them when I was like 14, 15 of spaceships flying around the bedrooms on strings and, you know, and that kind of thing. So, and I was on a thing called Screen Test. I mean, back in the, I don't know when it was, probably 19, 1980, BBC TV show, they showed a clip of my sci-fi film. Um, and it really literally was space, uh, spaceships on strings in front of a, you know, a star field, which I oh, painted yeah. on the wall of my bedroom. Um, and, and, you know, but it was really in me. And um, I, what, the thing what I didn't realize was how difficult it is to write scripts. And that was what, what took me a while. But when I made Written in Blood, it wasn't the best experience of my life. It, it really showed me a side of the film industry that I didn't really like. And I thought, if I'm going to do it again, if I'm going to go through that hell again, at least I'm going to make a film that I really want to make and I'm really passionate about. And I came up with um, Invasion Planet Earth, which at the time was called Kaleidoscope Man. And I, I went, you know, I did, I did the whole business plan thing. I wrote the big, thick business plan, went to see investors, sent it out. I sent out hundreds of these things to all these fund managers and anywhere that I thought I could get money from. Um, I sent it to TV companies, film companies. Um, I even made a, a little pilot, which is what I did on Written in Blood. I made a little pilot and that got me that feature. But with, um, with Kaleidoscope Man, it was just, it was just too big and, and nobody seemed interested. And, and I got to a point, you know, the years were ticking by. I spent nearly 10 years trying to get off the ground. Um, so it was, I remember in 1999, I came up with an initial idea that over a couple of years would become Kaleidoscope Man. So I worked my socks off. I couldn't get it going. You know, and uh, we, as a, you know, we wanted to get married and have kids and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, but I just kept going. I just kept going with it. And I was getting rejection after rejection. And, and as the internet started to take shape, this is how long, how long ago this thing was, um, you could put video online. You know, people were starting to put, uh, you could see video. You could, not on your phone at this point, but on your computer. And it was all kind of working quite well. And I thought, I need to, how can I get to a massive audience? How can I hit those people? And, Initially, before social media came along, I'd send out, I'd building up lists of people that I knew like sci-fi and trying to get money that way, and it wasn't really happening. Um, and I'd been going to memorabilia and Comic-Con, and I'd been selling DVD copies of Written in Blood. And I was meeting all these sci-fi fans. I, I knew, I knew they were all out there, and I was, you know, building up a contact list. And when social media came along, when Facebook came along, I thought, ah, this is the, this is the holy grail. You can really, you can really get out there. And and so, um, and, and so I started to do it and dabble with it. And it was kind of wasn't really working. I was making a couple of quid here and there and it wasn't really working. But it was when Kickstarter, to be honest, came along. I saw some other guys doing it and I thought, this is it. This is crowdfunding. This is the way to do it. Um, I jumped in, tried to raise the full amount uh, back in 2012. Um, didn't, it didn't happen. And then I looked at the film and I thought, well, it's the story of, a, you know, the guy and the girl come together at the beginning. She goes one way, he goes the other. And then hopefully they'll come together at the end. And so I thought, well, there's two films there. I can focus on her story and his story. So I decided to shoot the film in phases and, uh, and, and set a really a low target, £5,000, which was low for filmmaking. It was a lot of money still. And like 400 people kind of chipped in, 20 quid here, 10 quid there. And, and we made £7,000. So, wow. And I was really excited about this because I thought, it works. This actually does work. And it's real money because I've had years and years of people talking about money. Yeah, we'll get you 20 grand. We'll get you 200 grand for that or a quarter of a million for this. Yeah. We have all these conversations and they never go anywhere. And I've spent years listening to this stuff and it was really frustrating. So I, um, uh, so yeah, so this, uh, that, uh, 7,000 pounds came in and I thought I'll do the biggest scene first and, and we'll get, we'll get crowds of people to come along and hopefully they'll all sign up to the, uh, you know, to what we're doing. And um, my friend Mark Robinson and I just got on Twitter as new, blasted out, come and be in our movie, come and be an extra in, you know, in our sci-fi movie, come and get blasted by aliens. And um, I'd spoken to Film Birmingham, they were allowing us to block off a couple of streets in Birmingham, and, and, and with the money I was going to bring a crane in with some lights and a whole bunch of um, cameramen, or people I should say, camera people, and we should have, and we'll have loads of people running up and down the streets. The idea is that the spaceships are attacking them from above, and they're all kind of running along, getting blasted. And it was, um, 
it was really exciting, you know, and we were blitzing out. And it was like, yeah, and I'm getting your message. Yeah, we'll come, we'll come. And um, I turned up on the day about two hours early and, and I'd been there and wrecked it, but it suddenly dawned on me just how big this area was. I mean, these streets are really big, wide, gothic streets. And I thought, Christ, if we only get like 20 people turning up, it's going to look ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, you might know this already because I've said it enough times, but at one point, 900 people turned up. We couldn't believe it. And I was just, it just made me realize the power of social media. But also, it taught me a massive lesson about crowdfunding because the, the perception is you put your thing out there. And I'm making this film. Everybody all over the world is going to see it, think you're really wonderful and put money in. But it doesn't work like that. Um, it's all about engagement. And all these people came along. They ran up and down the street. They screamed. They had the best time in their life. They were absolutely engaged. And I, and I thought crowdfunding is more than just getting money off people. It's about bringing your audience in and taking them on the journey with you. And so I, I really committed to communicating my story, where we were, what level we were at, all the way through. And then for the next two years, we ran seven more campaigns. And I tried to do as many big scenes with crowds as we could. And um, after two years and seven campaigns, I mean, I've raised about 50,000 pounds. So it was a lot of money. But in movie terms, because we were doing it as properly and I was trying to pay people, you know, pay everybody to be in it. Um, it didn't, you know, we shot about 20 minutes of the final film. So it was a little bit frustrating. I thought, Christ, this is going to take, this is going to take years, you know. Um, anyway, people started to help me and some bigger investors came on board. And over the next sort of three years, we raised a bit more, you know, chunks of money. So I kept shooting the film in chunks, but the chunks were getting bigger and bigger. Brilliant. And, you know, eventually we had a film there, but no special effects. But that can be the next question if you want. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, that was and an you, amazing answer. You, you sorry, answered, that was, I don't do anything by half. So sorry. Yeah, you, you answered my next three questions in one question. Brilliant. <laughs> All right, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I was amazed um, I haven't seen the film with all the tanks and the special effects and things. Now, yeah. um, now that, that was amazing. Me. Now, how on earth do you go from that? And the, if you can tell us about what's, what I find really interesting was the pre-production work and mm. who did that and what he went on to do, which was really amazing in the journey. Oh, the artist. The artist. Matt. The conceptual well, yeah, and how that, yeah. Well, you know, um, I, I was, I had my little office in Nunny and I was doing kind of wedding videos, corporate videos, whatever. And I, I was trying to, you know, I was getting moving on, on Kaleidoscope Man. And my, my nephew was a, a teacher at the um, local college, sixth form college. And he taught arts and he said, Hey, you've got to see this guy. I've got this young man called um, Matt, Matt Allsop. And he's, um, he's really enthusiastic, but he said his work is incredible. And he showed me some pictures and I was like, wow. So I got Matt in. And I met this scrawny little kind of 16 year old and um, he had a, you know, a load of artwork that he'd done and it was stunning. I thought this is like young Ralph Macquarie. So being Mr. Spielberg, I said, well, I'll give you a couple of hundred quid and uh, just go read the script and come up with some images or come up with an image. Anyway, he took the script away and he did like eight of the most amazing paintings. I was like, bloody hell, these are incredible. Awesome. Um, and, <laughs> and what was really cool about them was, he did all the sci-fi stuff. They really, they looked really, really, really good and, and exciting. And they had an energy. And, and I thought, Christ, I want to make this. I really want to make this yeah, film now. Yeah. Seeing these. And, um, and so I went to raise a little bit of money. And, and what I did was I got him in and, and he did, I just got him to loads of artwork. He just sat there cranking them out. And uh, it did really well. But, but we ran out of money. Because you know, it took so long, I never had enough to employ people full time. Matt went on, but he built up a lovely portfolio of work, and um, he was trying to get in the, you know, in to do storyboarding and concept art, which is what he wanted. Um, and then he went to a company called Moving Picture, the Moving Picture Company in uh, in London. They got him in. But anyway, Gareth Edwards, who just made the film called Monsters, happened to see him. And now Gareth actually lives in Nuneaton on the housing estate that I'm on, or used to. He's parents live in now. But he doesn't oh, yeah. Live yeah. He lives in LA or somewhere, I don't know where he is, yeah. but um, he, uh, he saw Matt's work through Facebook and um, Matt, and then he got Godzilla.